You guys ready? Happy Marley Marley release, everyone. Bang, there she is. From the top, we got Big Kick, which is pretty much the same kick I use on this whole album, to be honest. I love this plugin. Um, yeah, it's just like a synth kick. So that's doing this. So it's just doing like the, I guess you call it like, yeah, like the sub, the sub of the kick. But when you layer it up with the other ones, you know, they're all just doing their thing. And then get onto the fun stuff. 808 hats. I actually recorded these in, I believe, through my 808. Yeah, ring shifter. That's what's doing all the like flangey stuff. some delay on there and my favorite transient master just taking a little bit of attack off they were a bit too bitey i think in the mix a bit too harsh and then this 909 loop as well this one's the main like this is what really drives the track in my opinion everyone loves a good 909 hat you know you're just immediately in house music territory there a little shaker loop. Don't know where that's from. Could probably be Splice. It might even be a Logic one. I'm really not that fussed about my shakers. I just like to throw them in as soon as possible just to get the vibes going. Yeah, that's just a Logic loop. Look, African King loop. We, we decided to never like just drop it where you'd expect it. That's the sneaky bar. So I've got a ton of stuff muted in the drums here. See? So if I was to put that all back in, it wouldn't, you know, it would sound uh, a little different. And then without. Much better. Classic disclosure vibes, that is. Take out the first beat, make them wait. Tease them. Tease the crowd. I love that. Like I said to you earlier, when everyone goes, one, two, three. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That's, I like that shit. I like messing with them. I think it's fun. I've kept it quite clean for this song. I didn't feel like this song needed much like squelch, you know, it just... Fatu Matter's voice is so soft and sensitive and floaty that it doesn't need a big distorted, you know, kit underneath. So I kept it out of the red. Uh, this is what it would have sounded like in the red. But still, like, the saturation is going to be adding a lot, you know, gluing it together. We're just looking for glue at this point. Um, we've got the inflator. Here it is without. As always, that thing just bringing everything to life. It's so good. Bit of saturation. So same kind of thing as the uh, as the Studa was doing the tape, but a little bit more sparkly. I've literally only got it on like twelve percent. Is that? I don't like to trigger the side chain with the kick drum itself. The main reason for that is because. I do a lot of automation on the length of the kick. So sometimes it will go boom and sometimes it will go boop, boop. And, you know, I just want control over the amount of pumping that the synth or the vocal or whatever I'm side chaining is doing. And so, you know, if you're sending it boom, you can't have a quick like, whoop. you know, you're, you're out of control. So I like to just use a little beep, basically. Like this is all that my side chain sends. Like a metronome. So yeah, I do that because control, basically. And the reason there's separate ones for UAD is because of latency. I've been through this before. Here's the bass bus here. We've got three basses in this tune, um, two bass guitars, and a sine wave bass um, for the sub. Yeah, it'll do for now. That's pretty much how we had it. So you've got one bass guitar doing that, and then another one on top. It's just literally like an attacky little bleep. Yeah, it's almost like a kick. It's like a kick being pitched around. And I, I would have added that in because I probably didn't think that the bass guitar had enough attack. 
sometimes the bass can be a bit like boom 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 and sometimes you want it to be a bit like boom 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 so you know if i solo it without it and then put it in i think you'll you'll hear what i'm talking about it just adds like almost extra finger noise do you know what i mean just adds as if you compressed it harder but without compressing it so yeah just adding a little bit of subtle attack and then we've got the big boy underneath the repro one huge sine bass that is literally just doing a big sine wave i think and all together So you can see in the sign, this is the sign EQ. I'm I'm taking out some of like a hundred hertz because there's already a lot of bass guitar information going on there. Yeah, a lot of plugins on the bass guitar. Um, here you go. Here's here it is without any. First of all, a bit of compression. I like the DBX 160 for bass guitar. It's really attacky and it gives me that finger noise that I'm looking for on that initial attack. And then we're going into a couple of decimorts. I love these bit crushers. So those are doing that little pss, 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 pss on the top. Um, I'll turn it up for you guys. So one's doing kind of white noise. Pss, and the other one's doing like a frequency um i like that on bass it's nice it, it kind of gives it a little bit of sparkle on the top then we're going into the isotope vocal doubler um and it's on super wide only one percent chorus and just just having it in a little bit so that's just adding some width and almost some chorus to the bass <laughs> If you're in headphones, you'll probably notice that. If I press this button, you'll hear what it's doing only. So that's, yeah, very wide and, you know, just making it a bit less down the middle, a bit more interesting. First thing, well, I'll take them all off first so you can hear what it's doing about. And then with. So yeah, lots of improvements there. Um, you got Decapitator first. Going in quite hot, actually. I wanted to dirty it up. Um, I do that quite often with uh, Digi, like, plug-in polysynths. Because, you know, they can sound a bit too clean sometimes. So you want to just give it some dirt on the way in. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, when we're going into this, actually, I'm using the Waves one. For find the bluey one to be a bit warmer. So again, you know, because I'm using a plug-in synth as opposed to my Juno or something. Just trying to give it everything I can to almost make it a bit worse. Bit of EQ, taking out the lows, boosting some clarity. So there you go, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 tracks of automation just on this one synth. Oh, actually no, volume's doubled up, maybe eight or nine. So yeah, we're controlling the release of the synth. We're doing some EQ buildups here. Some, yeah, no, release, making it making it longer. You know, just bringing the synth to life a bit, giving it movement, giving it some character. They're all just slightly different, just to, you know, go the extra mile and give it the detail it deserves. Same with this one, panning around. <laughs> So yeah, I just spent like a, an afternoon on all of those, just messing with them and making them sound interesting and uh, not too digi. All right, vocal bus. I'll mute all the bus, all the effects, and these. Mali mali, mali dunga dua uke tunga na dui mali mali, mali nyana fimba una. So first thing I hear is super uncompressed and lots of low mids. It actually sounds like a lot on its own, but because there's three of her doing it at once, those low mids really start to build up when you put them all in together. So I, you know, I'm taking out quite a lot of low mids here, but it's uh, when you know you have to watch your low mids build when you're doing BVs. That's the main thing you take out of BVs is low mids because they just start to every BV adds another kind of underneath, and you gotta 
you got to watch that, in my opinion. Uh, we're actually sending it to an altar boy for an octave down shift. Mali, 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 nyana fimba una. Mali, mali. Yeah, not much, um, just, a, just a touch, but it's on all of them. So again, it adds up. So halfway through the chorus, the, the octave above comes in. So it sounds kind of crappy on its own, but in the mix, I was happy with it. Cool, so that is um, those vocals. Now we can move on to the bus. So all three of these, these three vocals here, um, are all going through all of these plugins. So there's a lot of processing there. So first of all, we're going into the Wave CLA. So just grouping them all together, like gluing them together, making sure they react together. Not massive amounts of compression, just taking off the peaks. Uh, and then we're going into a decapitator for the same reason. I've actually got that on Punish. So that's actually given it a lot of distortion. It's just that I've backed it off on the mix here. I really like that about Decapitator. You know, you can push it really hard and then just back it down and get the sound you want while still working it and, you know, getting all those nice harmonics to pop out. DSing the whole group vocal. So I've got this unlinked so that you've got a stereo DSer going on on this. And then into Soothe. Soothe is doing quite a lot here, actually. So now you're hearing all the stuff it's taking away because I've inverted it. So for those who don't know, Soothe, everything you just heard there, that is what it's removing from the vocal. So it's all those harshness. Those, the stuff that gives you tinnitus. Just the stuff you don't need in a vocal. It's very good on a vocal, very good on guitar. Uh, and I even put it on the master out sometimes. I know mastering engineers who use this thing. Um, and you just back it off on the wet here. You don't have to have the full 100% taking all the frequencies out. I like to kind of make it do its thing and then just dip it until I can't. I can just about hear it. So for this one, I'm doing 77%. Echo Boy. Yeah. You know the drill. Echo Boy, bit of Valhalla, uh, and then a little bit more EQ. So I, I'm, I'm EQing post reverb and post delay, post soothe. So yeah, I, I must have just still sort of thought we got some resonancy things happening. And I probably would have done this like whilst listening to it with the music, not on its own. I would have been taking stuff out that I thought was fighting uh, in the mix. So that's what that's doing. Yeah, shit like that. But, you know, it's all dynamic. It's not taking it out. I've had this thing for years, and this is like my build-up machine. I use this all the time for, like... <clears throat> well, you'll see, it's in this tune for, like... Um... Yeah, good for build-ups. Me and Howard used to have one at each. Um, when we had the live show, you know, we had the two tables on stage. He'd have one, I'd have one, going through a load of delay, load of reverbs. Great for build-ups. Fat Fatu Mata's voice with a vocoder just sounds absolutely banging, I think. So the vocoder, uh, it's Howard's chords again. So the same chords as going through the Poly 6, but just, uh, you know, legato. And it's the Logic. Just the Logic vocoder. I'll take off all the plugins so you can hear it dry. So I'm compressing it really hard. Um, that's because I'm treating it like a synth. You know, I don't want any peaks and troughs in the volume. I just want it to be a constant sound because the vocal's taking care of the feel. That's why it's been pumped really hard. Bit of uh, overdrive, and then here is the EQ on the vocoder. <laughs> Thank you. 
So very subtle, just taking out the stuff I don't want. H delay, Valhalla, sidechain, you know, the standard. You know what's going on there, guys. Sending to chorus, and I'm also sending to the logic rotocab, like an organ rotocab. <laughs> Just adding a nice different texture to it there. And then you've got my pretty much traditional, normal disclosure master out. So that's without the plugins. And here's with. So very subtle, 2 dB reduction on the SSL nowhere near the red on the tape one or two db on the drama and then a bit of soothe oh and, and the inflator of course i think that's it guys i think we got there i think that's everything hey